Giving it all we got Giving it all we can Giving it all we got oh. Climbing up to the top of the world No fear, we're gonna make it Everything we want is ours Whoa. Hey, good morning from here on the Thai farm where I am contemplating what I really will get done today. Which, you know, you go back and forth. I usually do the walk around like what I'm doing now. I'm walking, I'm gonna, I walked around the pond a little bit. It helps me clear my mind, see what's up. And I can tell already that, you know, the, the mango trees, some of these other ones are starting to drop their leaves more rapidly. Pretty soon this whole area will be nothing but leaves on the ground and <clears throat> very few leaves in the trees. Some trees are, uh, what do you call them, perennial. <laughs> they are all year round have leaves, but I think most of ours don't. And so it's a boatload of leaves on the ground. It's funny, when I first moved here, I thought, oh, you gotta clean this up, you know? Out here, I need to get a rake. I need to get a leaf rake. And I was raking up piles, you know? Burn them or whatever. But then the piles were just too big and too often. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Um, better I just <clears throat> carve a path through them <laughs> so I can walk through them without having to step on top of a snake. But I do see over here that my banana, these two banana trees are already falling. I did put a stick up under there because I got a big old thing of bananas under there trying to get ripe still. It'll probably be a few more weeks, but that one looks like I'm gonna lose it. And those are big old banana leaves too. So I should probably cut those off. I mean, I can use the banana leaves for some. I like having my food on banana leaf. Just the presentation makes your food taste better but I know there was a few things that I wanted to get done. Uh, one of them, of course, is to continually improve and cobwebs. Improve, though, my water system. The water's okay, but now, it's, and now I'm kind of focus a little bit more on delivery but I need to go buy some bricks too because I want to do some other stuff this is uh, my wife's catchment for fish that she catches and she puts in there before she takes them out of there sells them this area right here <clears throat> this is the outdoor kitchen so it's the back side the drain just drains right out in here and then goes into the pond. But um, I think I'm gonna try and fill this part in with a cement platform, just so that it can be better organized, uh, put stuff, uh, especially as I try and build this out for the pizza kitchen and stuff. You know, my wife picked up some bag of charcoal while she was out yesterday. But yeah, so if that's a cement platform, a little bit of cement platform there, not the whole thing or whatever, but cement platform maybe out to about here. It'll be easier to put this stuff here and kind of clear out this area. This is where I'll start the, the bricks, you know, the shelving for the, actually I'm gonna do two barbecues here. And then, uh, or actually no, I think maybe the barbecues are here. And then the fish cleaning is here. That way you can go off and then on the cat corner it'll be the you know the pizza pizza oven man or just coal fired oven you can, you can cook a lot of stuff in there you don't have to cook just pizza this uh if you if you guys remember that thing that tree fell over we took some uh papaya off of it my wife straightened it up and then another another wind fest or whatever came knocked it back down this time she just left there, but these things are still growing. They've been growing, they grow a lot bigger since it fell. 
this tree stayed up this one's fallen I don't know how many times and it still has plenty of papaya that's growing but uh, actually this morning I just hammered there was a I had a big old thing of cement or a cement bag that was over here full of cement but then it got wet started to get hard and I I don't know if it was me or my wife but we put it over there then it got really hard and it became one big little mountain big little <laughs> came you know big old rock it was kind of in the way kept stepping on it tripping over it so I went over there this morning I smashed it got it out of my way actually when I came over that's why I need to do the water thing too because when I came over here this morning to get this hammer to smash that rock I come around this corner right here and I, I thought I heard my water pump I thought huh I did set this up yesterday <clears throat> if you remember I mentioned it so that was my original setup that I had for the float valve automatic float valve in the big tank turn on the well pump fill it up which I've had to kind of disconnect to while my wife has the pump here anyway so I went and bought this other box and another switch and independently hooked up the uh, by the way this all looks kind of crazy actually which it is but never fear when I get rid of all this <clears throat> water tanks and I wall this up and make it all renovated I'm probably gonna tear all that electrical out and and, and put a, a big you know box not just a breaker box but one of those like wide ones because those switches those automatic switches are they stick out they're, they're not they're not designed for this kind of box you can see it it's it sticks out farther so you can't close the door you probably could but it's not designed for those boxes they don't sell the small boxes like that you have to buy one of those big metal ones that are like deep you know so but that's all right <clears throat> they're only the, the smaller ones which probably enough for all that is it's only like <clears throat> four or five hundred bots so that ain't much but i didn't want to get that one right now so anyway i put that together and that all works fine but the pump was going and i'm like why is it going and then you can see right there there's a float valve therein actually lies the problem because the float valve needs to needs to turn up to turn off e even slightly just it's a ball so it'll well that's about enough but it seems like when I set that up I was messing with it yesterday but anyway that tank is not probably designed for that float valve uh, I'm gonna have to wait till that tank almost empties in order to see if I can rig it to make it work like it does in the big tank it's easy with the big tank because you got the the cord goes all the way down and then as the water fills it's easy for that thing to float and go straight up stand straight up in the water still and turn everything off right so what I'm gonna do and what I've done already this morning is I formed up the this area this was the this is hard this is from this when I poured this so I formed this up I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill that in with cement I got about a three quarters of a bag left and um, it should be enough hey cat what are you doing he's like hey man <laughs> anyway hopefully that's enough cement and then uh you know i got the sand out there full of cat crap but i should have enough to fill this in because oh what are you doing i need to i need to disconnect that blue tank over there by the house that thousand gallon tank this is two thousand behind me and i'm gonna take the thousand gallon and i'll put it right where that cat is sitting right cat I'm gonna put this um, I'm gonna put the blue tank here and I'm gonna switch that float valve 
over to the blue tank so that it can properly flow it up and turn it on and off like it should. You know, without having to mess around with the smaller tank. Which means that I'll be disconnecting the smaller tank. Which will be the first time since we moved here. I said I bought that, I don't know if you watched those videos, it's a long time ago, I probably talked about it, but when we first put that small knockdown house in there, 13 years ago, whatever, 14 years ago, um, <clears throat> we built a metal frame about this high. Matter of fact, I don't know where is that thing? Hmm. About this high and we put that on top of it and we pumped this well all the way over to that blue tank up there. Then that blue tank is what um, fed that little knockdown house. Although there was no filter on it. So I put cheesecloth around that, you know, the exit pipe inside the tank to catch any bigger stuff. But that's the, we, we use straight well water for the hot shower and the bathroom and all that stuff. And that, that's why everything turned orange. You know. But anyway, um, I moved it over here when I built that little cement platform after we got here. I built that and moved that over to here and, you know, whatever. Worked it like that. But now I, I'm not going to need that over here anyway. So what I might do is, uh, I don't know, I might put it over there by the house somewhere or something. No, or no, well, you know what? That's right. I could leave it out here. Cause I planned on taking those cement rings and you know, building a, a cement tower back up with the same, using the same old rocks and stuff. I just wash them all off, wash that sand out and charcoal, put it back in there. Probably be just as good. But for now, for today, what I want to do is I want to fill this in with cement. I'm probably gonna have to let it dry today. And then maybe tomorrow, disconnect that big old blue tank over there and then bring it over here. Again, I'll probably have to roll it around. Well, it's not as big as this one. It's not as wide as this one, so I might be able to pull it through the, the covered patio there. But I need to put that one here, right where the cat is while he, while he eyeballs anything that's moving. But yeah, I just used some metal rods and a piece of wood, a piece of bamboo over there, hold these shear board in place for a, a form i mean you know it doesn't have to be super su super structurally perfect it'll be structurally sound because it, it'll support the weight that that's that area actually it's 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 only 90 uh, centimeters wide i think so technically if i set it down here it only comes to about here so but i'm gonna give myself a little bit more room i'm just gonna fill this all in what what? I feel your belly is kind of full. You've been killing stuff this morning, huh? Anyway. <sighs> yeah, so that, did I mention that? Yeah, the pump was on when I come walk around and get that hammer and it was overflowing. So that actually the float, the float hadn't, it already reached the top and it hadn't tilted enough to turn off. And I just filled this yesterday, so now, now it's, um, where is it? So right about here. Yeah, so it's about here now. So that means it sucked up all this water or it emptied about all that water into the blue tank which I don't know, maybe the blue tank probably could use a little bit because we used water last night and all that. But um, even that, you know, with the blue tank, uh, if, if this is the tank that was draining in order to activate the pump to refill it, it would be activating the pump to refill it a lot quicker than if it was a big old 1,000 liter blue tank, right? So the bigger tank, you know, it wouldn't, the pump wouldn't have to turn on maybe as often. <sighs> Just my, my memory telling me that. What else? 
Yeah. Look out, cat. I did hit my head in there yesterday. Or no, you know what? That's right. I went to the market and uh, I think I walked underneath a tent. And of course, you know, those Thai market tents, bam, smack you right in the head. And I took one of the rails like, <laughs> ouch, I just touched. Yeah, so it had, it left, it gave me a scrape, man. Not cool. But you know what is cool is this view right here. That's the other thing I want to do. I want to take, I'm going to move this over there in front of my, in front of my, uh, Carabao head on the, on the other side of the pond, other side of the shop house here. And then I'm going to move this over so it's a little bit more. I mean, right now, when you look at it, I'm holding a camera, it's like in the middle, but it's not really. This is kind of like where the middle of this bench is. I want to move it over to where it's right in the middle of that pier. Give a better shot. Meh. Might be able to get out there in my waders because I, I do remember I, I wasn't really underwater out there, but I get out there a little farther, I should be able to grab that tree branch and maybe pull it down a little bit so I can trim it off, make that, you know, trim that off a little bit so I have a better view of the pond. I'll leave it low enough to where it blocks like the road but not my <clears throat> not the pond and maybe the field which the soybeans are getting bigger or the plants are anyway so the area is more green and this tree actually is the one that drops most of the leaves boom man, this thing is like nothing but <clears throat> leaves over here a haven for snakes and lizards the cats come out here later afternoon and they just park it right here. Just sit on the cement, kind of lay down and watch. Anything that rustles in the leaves, moves even slightly, they're like, I'm on it. And they'll... I need to watch them. But anyway, let's... Uh, Let's mix some cement, huh? I already anticipate that my arms are gonna hurt. I was, uh, I was looking, I, I know what, you know, my, the anatomy of my rotator cuffs and basically my whole body. Athletic training was my major, <clears throat> or was my discipline within the major. And um, anyway, yeah, it's probably torn for sure. So that'll ex exacerbate it while I'm trying to mix and do all this. Even when I was hammering with this arm, they're probably both torn. This one's more of like the, at the, you know, head of the bicep or whatever. But this one's definitely the rotator cuff. And so I, well, I want to research and... Um, what happens if you ignore it? <laughs> just, just ignore it. And you know, it's just gonna be a painful shoulder. It doesn't grow into a tumor or, or get, you know, ugly or something like that. It might lead to more impairment. It might lead to a full tear if it's not already. Um, but for the most part, you know, as long as you're able to move your shoulder, you'll be able to use it. Um, when it first happened, you know, I, I couldn't sleep on that shoulder. I, I would try to sleep and, oh, and I would have to turn it on my back, you know, or look straight down my arm, lay on this side, then this one's messed up, and try to lay on my back, ah. And I moved away from that to where I can actually kind of sleep normal position, although it is painful and it probably does wake me up. 
but shit, man. I don't really want to go to the doctor. I don't have time for that, man. It's only like, I, I actually, there's an MRI, like, place over here, you know. Uh, I think you can walk in there and just get an MRI. Which I also looked at MRI versus ultrasound because, you know, before they had MRI, it was all ultrasound. So the US versus the MRI, you know, I looked at some longitudinal studies. Of, I only, they only had like 40 people, but for the most part, the person who was reading them was the determining factor as to whether, you know, things were torn or not torn or whatever like that. And, and in the end of the day, they were both comparatively equal in terms of um, identifying the problem which ligament and you know whether it's a deltoid or this or that or whatever anyway so but I could go over there and just get an MRI that's what I was thinking you could walk in there and get an MRI I think they're they're probably about seven thousand seven or eight thousand baht each maybe or seven seven thousand baht and then maybe a couple hundred if you want to take the film with you so whatever I could do that just to so I can look at, I can read the MRI. You know, you don't have to be a rocket science to do that. And I can tell if it's torn or not from reading the MRI. Um, but, you know. And then orthoscopically, if it was just, uh, the kind of tear it probably is, is, you know, they could probably do it orthoscopically. You know, they'll go in there with two rods and one has a little pincher on it and they'll grab that ligament and they'll pull that thing down back over the head of my humerus and then they'll use the other rod to push push nail gun that thing in place that's really all they do and hopefully you don't tear it again um, yeah anyway that's me being a doctor I do my own DIY medicine here we do it all medicine dentistry Hell, I probably even do diabetes but diabetes is basically, unless you're an anomaly, you can pretty much control that with your diet. So watch it. I don't have any of that stuff. I'm healthy, except for injuries. So for now, anyway, I might cut back on the 4,000 Escolas I drink a week, but I don't know. all I know is I gotta go mix cement. So let me do that, <laughs> and I'll get back at you. Well, got that done. Down as that could be, I, I actually didn't have enough cement, of course. I thought I did. I probably did if I would have had proper sand and proper gravel. But I, I had all that, you know, Leftover sand, crap sand, cat crap sand. But I used, I think, four buckets of, or six buckets of sand. And uh, six buckets of the bigger rock. And uh, three buckets of cement. Anyway. I, oh, I didn't have enough, but what I did do, you can see it here, was I put, I put the most of it in the middle. So it teeters on the end there and teeters on that end over there, but you know, this is the round part of the tank that'll sit right here. So I just made sure that the center portion was going to be enough cement to support the tank <clears throat> and uh, I can feel I can feel that rest in even around the tank after I buy more cement of which I will uh, cement on my camera um, Buy more cement 
when I um, buy bricks and such for I'm talking in slow motion because that kicked my ass when I buy the bricks and stuff that I need for uh, making that outdoor treats the kitchen and uh, I'm gonna buy more cement to, to form up that and make that solid also. Oh my God. It's brutal. You know, two years, man. I keep telling myself, you know, I feel like I can pretty much, you know, do anything, right? I mean, I'll put my mind to it. But as a career, you know, I'll, I'll, I was a teacher, right? I, I taught for 15 years, but then I became a school administrator for another 15. And although that is incredibly taxing on your mind, it thereby becomes taxing on your body because of the physical stresses that you get from the mental freaking trauma you have to go through in public school today oh i'm gonna sit out here my, oh yeah that's it right there yeah oh my god but you know <clears throat> and i would build projects here and there and actually before we left california i spent a good six months or whatever remodeling our house by myself you know, floors, granite counters, all that stuff I'd never done before, but I learned how to do it. And I did it, and it was exhausting. But it, you know, it reinforced the fact that I could do it here. So when I got here, I got right at it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, basically I'm still doing it, but the, the first, I don't know, year and a half, it, It was full on a lot of work. And when I cut my hand, I slowed down for a couple months, but you know, I had to finish the shop house, right? So, but mixing all that cement, cutting everything, hammering everything, pulling everything, pushing everything, all that stuff. Uh, you know, when I got here, I was 63, right? Yeah, 65 now, 66 this year in August, but. So I was 63, and at 63 years old, starting the construction trade or whatever, probably not a good idea. The two years now that I've worked on this property, my body, my physical body, has probably aged 10 years. Because now, um, you know, on, on, when I was doing the shop house, I would mix the big black bin right i would mix that sometimes you know four or five times in a single day man and one of those kicks your ass and uh and now i have the smaller round one and i just you know i, I did two of those today to in order to fill that void it looks small but it's you know, eight inches tall and whatever, it was it was deep. I mean, you know, you have a lot of sand and a lot of cement powder stuff, but when you get it wet, it, you know, it turns into hardly anything. So, I, I was exhausted. I couldn't, I had to, you know, I had to wait 10 minutes still before I even started this video again. But I can feel that, you know, I'm tired. I'm tired now. I think, you know, I don't know. Maybe I just need to go somewhere and recover <sighs> for a few months or something. But it, it's it's wearing on me. I'm not sure how much more I can do. The cement mixing is what's a, psh, brutal. I should have bought that cement mixer. 
The little one, I think it can hold two bags worth of cement, which is 16 buckets or what? Yeah, two bags of cement is 16 buckets of sand and eight, eight, 16, no, or like 24 buckets of sand with the cement. And if I put two bags, it'd be 24 buckets of cement and 32 buckets of gravel in order to make concrete. If I wanted to just make cement, I just put the sand and the cement in there. Which actually, for the most part now, that's probably what I'd be doing. I don't. I did concrete for this one, but uh, when I look at putting a putting cement over that brick platform out there and using cement for the mortar on the on the oven project, all that stuff, that's all just sand and, and cement. So definitely easier to mix in a mixer. And I know I should be mixing smaller batches. Hell, if I if I did it little bucket, like you know, one gallon bucket by one gallon bucket, yeah. But I use it pretty quick. I mean, if I did it in one gallon, you know, that, what's that? Five bricks or something like that. So I don't know. I'm just <laughs> reflecting that I I think I I think I have damaged my body in the last two years. Too much, too fast, or otherwise just too old. You know. I'm retired. But in many ways, you know, it also has been has kept my sanity. You know, when you're retired, what do you, what do you do, you know? I could probably think of a hundred things to do, but doing them is, is different. My, my pond net is still in good shape, but I see it's only been a couple of days, so I already got 50 leaves in there. And they ain't selling fish yet, the, the, you know, the government, fish farms if you want to call them that, the government that sells all the little babies they're not selling yet I, I, I don't know when it'll be maybe another month or so you can drive over there and, and you can get as many as you want from little tiny ones to i think you can get them almost this big yeah. but that'll be that what time is it now of course my watch is messed up and see, man, I had to take my glasses off when I was doing that because these are my only decent pair of glasses left. And I, you know, the, the powder gets on them, you're screwed, you know. Anyway, 11.30. <clears throat> Maybe I should go buy bricks today. I think I already estimated I need about 150 bricks, cinder block. I mean, so those are, those guys will load them up for me, but I'll have to unload them myself. Hmm. Very quiet today. You don't hear no cars or motorcycles racing by. It's January 3rd, so it should be pretty much back to work day. Water level dropped a little bit in this pond, I can see. But the water's totally calm. It's like glass out there. Good for fishing. I can see all the fish. Really? <laughs> all right, man. Well, I think I'm gonna say that's about it for this one. If I get. If I get to those bricks, maybe I'll show you what I got and add to this video. Otherwise, I'll ship that into another, into my into my brick oven video. All right, man. Well, let me know what you think of my little cement challenge over there.
Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep watching and I'll get back at you.